right now at 38 degrees. It's time for Morning Today with Jonathan Mark on AM 1480 WLEA. Well, yes, it is time for Mornings at 8, and here we are six minutes after 8 o'clock on a Monday morning. Monday. Unmistakably Monday, the start of yet another work week. You know, on Brian's News, uh, there was a story in Bath where the three guys were arrested for either having meth or selling meth or something like that, and <laughs> and they've been released. Right? Now, Brian, you know, I think that's really interesting. As the chief, Chief Mullen said in Bath, this is the new New York. Catch and release. I, I, I that's, that's it right there. That's, that's how that law goes. Catch and release. You're arrested and out you go. Man, I don't know about that. But anyway, um, let me see what else is going on. New York State, regionally, all that. And then I have a whole bunch of Christmas stories <laughs> related to Christmas and all that. Pretty interesting stuff. Anyway, um, next Monday, the 16th, the new green light law goes into effect. So with just a couple of days left. And county clerks, mostly upstate, are very much against this. They're from Columbia County, Otsego, let me see, Clinton County, Niagara, Erie, Rensselaer, and they're all expressing their uh, concerns that this might not go quite the way that uh, they would like. The uh, green light statute, of course, uh, slates is slated to become effective next Monday, the 16th. Elliot Spencer and that touched off something of an uproar and so he withdrew his plan right so we're trying it again in 2019 and on Friday the Department of Motor Vehicles posted new information on its website offering guidance to people interested in applying for licenses huh the statute allows all New Yorkers 16 or older to apply for a standard not for federal purpose, non-commercial license or learner's permit, regardless of whether they are citizens or their lawful status, the state agency said. <laughs> and those seeking applications are advised to provide documents identifying them by name, date of birth, and address within the state. Documents that will be ac accepted include valid foreign passports, foreign marriage or divorce records, permanent residence cards, uh, border crossing cards, foreign birth certificates, and valid foreign licenses. And several county clerks, including the county clerk of Niagara and Erie, uh, say they're planning to post signs in motor vehicle offices emblazoned with the phone number of federal immigration authorities. They're not supposed to do this under the green light law. Anyway, the law makes it illegal for any public employee involved in processing license and registration applications for undocumented residents to furnish that information to law enforcement. Now, Stephen Choi, and Mr. Choi is the director of the New York Immigration Coalition, one of the groups promoting Green Light, said his group is prepared to initiate lawsuits against county clerks who interfere with the rights of immigrants, in other words, illegal immigrants, to apply for licenses. He said, our message is clear to these clerks. Put aside your cheap partisan posturing and do what you were hired to do. Uphold the law. Now, what these county clerks are saying, wait a minute, they are upholding the law, federal law. So that's how that's going. And uh, there's, there's still a couple of days left. You, you really have no idea. This might, maybe, maybe the county clerks can't stop this. Or maybe not. Who knows? We'll find out if the green light law goes, does go into effect next week next Monday. Huh.
Okay, what else have we here? Uh, another controversial law is uh, it was passed in Monroe County and the uh, county uh, executive signed it last Monday. And the law says that it is illegal, let me see, illegal to, uh, you cannot make threatening, harassing, or annoying gestures toward police officers or emergency responders. And those who do could be punished by either fines or time behind bars or both. And that's causing quite a stir up there. The Monroe County Chiefs of Police Association has announced that none of the 12 departments in the association are enforcing this new law. Critics say the law is unconstitutional, is vague, and could be enforced disproportionately against minority populations. And the Monroe County Chiefs Association has announced that none of the 12 departments will be enforcing it. We read it and we all said no, said the chief of the Gates PD, and he serves as the association the president. So they're just, they won't, they will not enforce this law. And a similar plan is being considered in another uh, county, uh, Broome County, and that will be voted on later this month. So... I, 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 don't, I don't know. Annoying a cop or annoying or harassing a first responder. Now, that could, you know, I kind of see where they might be against this because it just might be a little vague. What they're doing in New York City, of course, and on Long Island and Brooklyn and all that stuff, I mean, when they harass cops, they throw things at them, Right. You know, they're throwing things at them, and uh, that, that's, that's, that's going just a little over the top. Now, that should be punishable. But as far as saying something, boy, boy I, 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 I don't know about that. Those who are against this new law in Monroe County say that uh, it, uh, it kind of stifles free speech. And I, I don't know. You can't say anything? I can see why you wouldn't want to harass a cop, right? That's pretty stupid and, you know, all that. But to just say something, boy, I don't know about that. And it could, let's be honest, it could be enforced disproportionately against minority populations. Let's be really, really honest about this. So, I don't know, as far as throwing things at them or physically harming them or something like that, yeah, right. That's that's definitely, definitely illegal, and it should be illegal, and it should be punishable. But as far as saying something, as I said, to be perfectly honest, man, I don't know about that. So uh, they're having a hard time enforcing that in Monroe County. Hmm. Okay, that's, that's that one. And what else? What else? This is uh, the legislative session in Albany starts next month, just in, the, in a couple of weeks. And one of the things that's going to be coming up is a possible increase in taxes. The, the, the state of New York is facing a deficit of $6.1 billion due primarily to for the Medicaid costs, right? So what they're talking about is possibly raising taxes, not only just on corporations and uh, wealthy people, the millionaire's tax, but this kind of, you know, it trickles down. And it directly or indirectly affects a lot of people in a lot of ways, not just rich people, whatever rich is, I have no idea, it's all relative, or corporations. But um, it could lead to, uh, let me see, higher nuisance fees, or it might increase the uh, cost to drive a car, or heat a home, or do something like that. So Assembly Speaker Carl Heasty is all about, he's all about raising taxes. He would rather raise taxes than make cuts in, in Medicaid. So he'd rather raise tax. Okay, fine, very good. We'll, we'll see, we'll see how, how, that, uh, how that goes. Uh-huh. And that, the, as I said, the legislative session starts next week. Okay, and from there we go to something a little more lighthearted here. Uh... I have a bunch of stories dealing with Christmas. Boy, you know, more and more people, I say this every day because there 
more and more and more every day. More and more people are putting their Christmas decorations out and lights and all that stuff. And boy, it's looking. Boy, does it look nice out there. I love it. Absolutely love it. Let me see. How about a Christmas tree? Have you put your Christmas tree up yet? Hmm? Uh, we have a little tiny out of... Well, we don't have any kids, right? At least, at least not little ones. Um, so we have a little tree. A little... And anyway, the main... plastic and cloth.
and, and they thought it was the neatest thing. I never really liked it. My sister didn't like it, but my parents thought it was the greatest thing. So it was a white artificial tree in a stand. And it had, the stand would revolve. The stand itself would revolve. And we had these blinking lights on this Christmas tree. And the stand also played music. So you add it all up, and we had a white artificial tree with blinking lights that revolved and played music at the same time. So you could be sitting on the couch and looking at this tree, and you would get vertigo in like five seconds. And kids like to like lay under the tree and look up at the thing. So if you were lying underneath the tree and looking up, I mean, you, you could start to get really dizzy really fast. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, so that's, that's what we had. The, the vertigo tree, the vertigo Christmas tree. Okay, more a little more on, uh, let me see your army here, a little more on Christmas. As I said, I have a whole bunch of stories this week. I got a whole stack of them here. Uh, this is in Canada, Walmart in Canada, N not here in the U.S., but in Canada. Walmart in Canada has apologized for a sweater featuring Santa with cocaine. I'm not making this up. I have this story right here. There's a photograph. And Walmart in Canada has apologized for an adults-only Christmas sweater that appeared, it is not appeared, it's, it's real, that's what it is, appeared to depict Santa with cocaine. The retailer pulled the uh, holiday outfit along with several other rather risque seasonal sweaters Saturday after they caused a stir with social media users, Global News Canada reported. So this sweater, there's a cartoon-like Santa Claus sitting on a couch, and in front of him is three absolutely unmistakable lines of cocaine. And in his, let me see, in his right hand, he holds a straw. I'm not making this up. Where did I find this? Where did I find this? I don't know if it was on Fox. I believe, no, oh, it was on Breitbart. So there's Santa Claus. And, oh, and on, on the, the table in front of him, it's, it's, it's written, let it snow. You can't make this up. So there's Santa Claus with three lines of cocaine in front of him and a straw in his right hand. So anyway, that's totally ridiculous. That is just ridiculous. Luckily, uh, Walmart pulled it. This is in Canada once again. And uh, <clears throat> don't these people know what they sell? Don't they know what they... Remember last week I had a story about the Amazon was selling uh, merchandise, Auschwitz-themed Christmas decor? You, you remember that? It was last week. Boy, I don't know. These people just don't know what they're selling. I have no idea. They really ought to check out what they're doing. Anyway, that's it for this morning show, and I will see you tomorrow at 8.05. Bye. A fundraising account has been created at the Hornell Bottle and Can Retrieval Center at 286 Main Street, Hornell, for the recent house fires that occurred the f Sunday from 9 until 3. 100% of the proceeds will go to the families that were affected by this recent tragedy. Again, the Hornell Bottle and Can Retrieval Center is located at 286 Main Street, Hornell.